Sorry about that. I got cut out for a minute there, but I'm back again. And I just set this to stream on YouTube because I couldn't get Facebook to work yesterday. So we're going to try YouTube today. And I will upload the current video that I just finished from yesterday onto YouTube. So if you missed yesterday's session, you can catch it again on YouTube for the next few days. All right, welcome. So glad you're all here. I'm going to just grab my website address. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to put that website up on the screen so everybody can see where to find out more about our programs. I'm going to copy that, paste it over here, and there we go. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. We've got about five, seven more minutes to go before everybody is here. So I'm just going to put on a timer here and I'm going to run up and get a glass of water because I forgot to pour my water. And I'll be back with you in just about, well, it looks like about six and a half minutes until we get started. So I'll put on the timer for six minutes, 30 seconds, and I will be right back. Looks like I need to turn on my video for that timer to take place. All right, super. So right now you can be heard. Oh, okay. A bit cold. Okay, good. Looks like everybody's getting on. We keep grabbing some new members. So many people are shy and don't show their face when we are meeting. It's so interesting to me. 
I love to see all of your bright shining faces, but if you are shy, that's okay. You don't need to turn your video on. And that is true whenever we have workshops. You don't necessarily need your video on for your workshop. But I see that some people are working on projects and I love to see what you're working on. So it makes it more interactive if you have your video on. I'm working on a little project too because I wanted to get started with my hand applique. So I'm gonna sit here and hand applique as we talk for just a few minutes until we are ready to get started. That's just two minutes away, just two minutes away. So I see some of my friends here that I've seen for years and years and years, and I see some brand new people that I really haven't met before. And it's nice to have that mixture of people that I know and people that I don't know, people that are new to Rotary Cut Applique and people that have been doing Rotary Cut Applique for years, like my friend Bee. Bee is up on my screen. She's up on the top row in the gallery. I can see Bee out there and she has been making quilts my way for a very long time, right Bee? We've been friends for a long time. Um, we have Irene Hanyan out there. Irene, I see you ironing at your ironing board. Irene has been one of our members, our founding members of Ahead of the Curve. And she has been doing projects with me for a long time as well. So it's nice to see some familiar faces and it's so nice to see so many new faces as well. People that are new to my applique techniques. So I'd love to come here to you. Every couple of months, I try to do some, um, a three day something, whether it's a sale and I demonstrate products or it's applique school and we talk about different methods of applique and how my methods can make your applique easier. Um, in one way or another, every month or two, I come out to the community and um, we get together like this in a bigger event. I also have weekly Facebook group meetings. Uh, my Facebook group is called Rotary Cut Applique with Sue Pelland. And weekly, you can meet with me on Facebook on Tuesdays. That's 11 o'clock on Tuesdays. That's 11 o'clock Eastern time. I was on my computer last night around seven in the evening and people were still trying to get into this meeting. It was all done. But my West Coast people, didn't realize that we started at four o'clock Eastern. And so we ended up with some people trying to get in yesterday evening. Oh, that's my timer going off, telling me it's time to get started. So I'm so glad that you are all here with me today for, um, what are we doing today? For hand applique with a hero. That is our topic for today. And we're gonna get into a little, little bit more slowly. We're not gonna dive right into the hand applique because I see right now I've got 38 people on. Yesterday we had about 75. I expect that more people will come on um, as we go. But I do have a presentation for you. And I'm gonna get started with the presentation so you can learn a little bit more about me and what we do. And then we will get into our hand applique demo. I've got my hand applique going right now. You see, I've got my thimble on. I'm doing some hand applique as we are getting started here so I can do a nice demo for you. Okay, so let me go grab my, um, my presentation and I'll get started with that. And in order to do that, I'm gonna share my screen with you. And uh, Donna is here with us. Hold on just a sec. Donna's here with us today again. And Donna is going to be able to uh, alert me to any questions that you have in the chat. Today, we're going to all be um, muted while we have the presentation. That way, we can do a really good recording so that I can post that recording later on YouTube. In fact, we are live streaming to YouTube. So we don't have any background noise from different people's um, uh, cameras and microphones. We're gonna mute everybody. And then, good, I'm gonna mute all. Um, make sure I'm not muted. 
Okay, good. Then we're going to get started. So if you do have questions, please put them in the chat. Donna will unmute and she will um, she will uh, let me know if there are any questions. I'm just seeing Donna's note. She's up in Maine right now. One of the joys that we have found um, is working from home. And Donna is working from her summer home up in Maine. I'm just going to give Donna permission to, where did Donna go? <laughs> she was here a minute ago. Oh, there she is. I'm just going to make Donna a co-host that, so that she can um, control the meeting also. All right, good. We're ready to get started. And good. We've got about 45 people showing up right now. So that's fantastic. I would love to know where you are coming from. So if you were not here with me yesterday, go ahead and type new in the chat and tell me where you're from. Even if you were here yesterday, let everybody else know where from all over the country you are. Hey, nice to see so many friendly faces out there. That's terrific. All right, um, your chat is down below. There's a menu bar on the bottom of your screen if you're on a computer. If you're on an iPad, you wanna to touch the screen to find your menu. Up in the top right-hand corner, if you are on the computer, you have a little thing that says view. If you click view, it gives you two or three options. You can be on speaker view. That is the best view to be on because then I'm gonna be big and everybody else is not gonna show. So when I'm doing a demonstration, you'll be able to see it much better if you're on speaker view. So can everybody find speaker view? If you're on a uh, iPad or your phone, tap your iPad or phone to get those commands up and look for the word view on your screen, click on view and change to speaker view. All right, good. All the technicalities out of the way. I think we're ready to get started. So I'll share my screen and tell you a little bit about me. So first of all, welcome to Applique School. I'm so happy to have all of you here today. Give me a thumbs up if you are seeing welcome to Applique School on the screen. And I know I'm sharing my screen. Any thumbs up there? Not yet. Okay. We aren't seeing it, Sue. Okay, good. Thank you. Is that better? Yes. Oh, good. I'm glad I checked. Hey, I see a thumbs up from Patricia. Thank you. Okay, well, this is me. I'm Sue Pelland, and I am the founder of Sue Pelland Designs. I have been teaching applique with a new and different method for the past 13 years since I invented the Leaves Galore templates. Um, I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'll tell you something about my kids in a little bit. I also love to uh, speak about applique and I've written a couple of books on applique. So that's just me out in my garden. I'm also a gardener. I love working out in my garden. And this is my family. So I wanted to show you my husband Jeff there. He's from Canada. Um, I took him out of Montreal 32 years ago, and now we live in Massachusetts. We're here at a clam boil, which is a big event we have every year down in Rehoboth at my cousin's house. And this is our family get together every year with about 100 people, and we're doing that next week. So my daughter Lauren is next to Jeff. Lauren just flew to Africa. She just got to Rwanda and she's on her way. She's just got a layover and she's on her way to, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting which country she's going to first. Anyway, she's going to be uh, studying um, uh, the um, chimpanzees or the gorillas. She's gonna study the gorillas. She is a biology teacher. So that's Lauren and she is just getting to Africa as we speak. So if she texts me, I might just have to take a second to let her know that I'm happy she arrived safely. Then you've got me and my son, Jason. Jason is a barber here in, in um, uh, Whitensville, Massachusetts. And my son, Timmy, works with my husband and they are both technical computer people. So thank goodness I have a technical computer person in the house, two of them in fact. So they help me with all of these technical things we do now with quilting and teaching online. 
And this is my team. Over here on the right, you see Donna. Donna is up in Maine right now. And this happens to be a big Maine lobster dinner. Actually, it's a Massachusetts lobster dinner that we have every year here as a team. You'll see me right there next to Joanne. Joanna is our shipping coordinator. She does all of the shipping for Sue Pellin Designs. And there you have Penny. She is my all around right hand person and she helps me keep stay organized and helps all of our members and our customers get what they need from Sue Pellin Designs. So we were established in 2009. That's when I invented the Leaf Galore tools and I've been teaching ever since. Well, yesterday I got to know some of you out there because you were, you weren't shy, you were writing comments in the chat, um, but you were a little bit shy. I didn't have a whole lot of questions or a whole lot of comments until afterwards. Then my email went crazy with questions. So I'll try to share some of those questions later with you if you haven't thought of some of your own. So thank you for sharing yesterday. That was great. And today I hope I'll get to know you a little bit better because I hope you'll be, you won't be shy at all. I hope you'll ask lots of questions in the chat or at the end, we're gonna have the opportunity to do a live Q&A and you can ask me questions. We'll all unmute so you can ask questions, okay? All right, if you were not here yesterday, just type the word new in the chat. So I know that you weren't here yesterday, but you're here today. And I will do a tiny little bit of review, but I'm not really going to do that because we don't have a whole lot of time and I'm going to upload the video from yesterday onto YouTube. This video right now is being simulcast to YouTube. So if people are not here or you want to watch it again, it will be on YouTube later. But yesterday's, we had a little problem with the simulcast. So instead, I'll upload it to YouTube as soon as I'm done here. Okay. Uh, yesterday, I showed you some techniques and tools that I've designed to make applique easier. And the tools that I've designed are called the Leaves Galore tools, those curvy wavy tools, and the Hearts and More tools. Inside of each of these tools, there's some instruction sheets. We do use Grace True Grips on the back of our tools to prevent them from slipping around. Um, we use Misty Fuse in most of my quilts for fusible applique. And here's some of my favorite products. I've got a chalk wheel, a chalk line, some chalk, and two of my books. So this is what we call our applique bundle. And I'm gonna be using a few of those tools today, even for our hand applique demonstration. Now, were you surprised when I started cutting leaves with the Leaves Galore templates? and I could cut 16 leaves at a time with my rotary cutter. I bet you some of you have not seen that demonstration before, and some of you have. It's always a fun one to see how I can stack up four layers of fabric at a time and cut those leaves four at a time to cut 16 leaves at once. But we didn't even have the chance to look at the hearts and more tools, okay? So I hope we'll be able to do a little bit of that today but I really wanna focus on hand applique techniques and hand applique techniques really work beautifully with the Leaves Galore tools in particular. So we're not gonna to focus too much on Hearts and More today. Oh, that's a Rings and Things tool. Whoops, I thought it was Hearts and More. Uh, Rings and Things is just a jumbo version of Hearts and More. So um, these are all the shapes that we talked about yesterday. These are all the shapes I can make. The pink shapes are made with the hearts and more tools and the green shapes are made with the leaves galore tools. Now, when you're cutting with this method, you are cutting these actual shapes. I do fusible applique in general. So what you cut is what you get. You cut fuse and stitch, and there's no seam allowances to turn under. But today we're gonna to be looking at hand applique. So we need to make some adjustments to what we did yesterday, okay? Now you could spend weeks or months or even years learning all of the fun things that you can do with the Leaves Galore tools and the Hearts and More tools, and we only have three days. 
and about an hour and a half each day. So it's not enough time to cover all those fun things you can do. But I wanna give you a little taste of what's possible. Okay, so here is the Bellon Rouge quilt. I see B out there. I see um, Anita's here. I see Irene. Um, these are all ladies that have made Bellon Rouge with me before. Every one of the shapes made in this quilt were cut with the Leaves Galore or the Hearts and More tools, and they were fused and appliqued. But if you look at that quilt, you realize that all of that could be done beautifully with hand applique as well. So I want to give you some tips today on hand applique and easier way. So our focus is going to be on hand applique and hand applique is best for people who have a lot of time or you want to make an heirloom quilt. So maybe you don't have a lot of time, but you want to have one beautiful special quilt that is an heirloom quilt. Um, even if you are doing that, I can still help you speed up the process, okay? Well, I've been quilting since I was a little girl. My mom taught me how to quilt, and my mom is an amazing hand quilter and hand appliqueer. This is one of her quilts. That's my mom and dad on their 50th wedding anniversary. Um, but after all those years of hand applique and hand quilting, her fingers just don't work the same way as they used to. So we are going to help to alleviate some of that strain on your hands by cutting things in an easier way instead of cutting with scissors, okay? So today we're going to find an easier way to applique, even if your choice is hand applique. All right, so I'm going to dive right into a demonstration of hand applique skills using a HERA marker. But I'm also going to tell you about a few other methods, just in case those methods more closely resemble what you're already doing. Okay, so I'm going to go through a couple of different methods with you, but my favorite method is using a HERA marker to help me prepare my hand applique shapes. So I'm going to stop, stop sharing that screen for now. And I'm going to change to my overhead camera. And I hope I got it right. I tried to adjust the camera. Um, let's see. Okay, you're going to see my feet down there under the table, but that's okay. I don't mind. I am barefoot here in my sewing room. One of the benefits of working from home is to get to be comfortable and work here in my slippers in my sewing room. So let me just move my table a little bit so you won't see my toes under there. So this is the block that we made yesterday. And I made this block with rotary cut fusible applique. And I took some time this morning to do the blanket stitching. Now I did record how I did that blanket stitching. And as a little bonus for you, I'll send you an email with the blanket stitching video in there. Might take me a day or two to get that ready for you, but I will get this uh, blanket stitching video ready so that you can see how I actually did the stitching on this block. And I told you yesterday, I used a little timer and I set it to 22 minutes and I try to stitch for 22 minutes a day. Well, this was this morning's project. It actually took me 27 minutes to sew this block. So um, you'll see that on Instagram. I posted a picture on Instagram with my timer, which I try to do as often as I get to sew. I'll let you know what I'm sewing that day. Well, today I sewed this block. You can see how beautifully flat it is. I didn't use any stabilizer in the block. I just did my blanket stitching and it came out just gorgeous. So today we're going to attempt to make the same block, but I'm gonna do it in a little miniature version. Yesterday, when I went to make this block, I cut my background too small. So I redid this block from what we did yesterday. And then I'm gonna use that smaller block. I actually ripped off all my fused pieces. Can you see all the fusible on the back of that? When you rip off fusible pieces, it leaves the fusible behind. So I just turned it over and now I started my hand applique. And gosh, I just lost my hand applique needle, but that's okay. 
So I want to show you how we're going to do that hand applique in a few different ways. Now, the first way that I'm going to show you is my favorite method, and that is rotary cut applique and then preparing the edges of your applique shapes with a Hira marker. Now, I promised I would try to make this a little bit faster for you. So instead of taking the time to make a little plastic template from your um, shapes, I'm going to use the four inch leaves galore tool and I want to make a four inch leaf. So normally I would be tracing that leaf shape onto my fabric. I can do that with the tool pretty easily. And then normally I would be cutting out that leaf shape one at a time with a nice sharp pair of scissors. These are not very sharp, but I'm going to just cut that out outside of the line. And then I'm gonna use that drawn line to turn on. I've got a big metal thimble here on my finger and I can't even cut with that thimble on. So there we go. That's what most people are doing for their applique. Then they're using the turned, excuse me, the marked line, and you're turning your applique pieces on that marked line in order to do your hand stitching with turned edges. So I wanna give you an easier method if this is your method for a needle turn applique. So instead of cutting one shape at a time and tracing every shape with a pencil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to overcut using the leaves galore tool. So the leaves galore tool is made to cut fused applique shapes where I don't need a seam allowance. So when I do need a seam allowance for a four inch leaf, I'm going to overcut those shapes. And let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna cut through four layers of fabric at a time, but I'm not going to cut um, all the way along the tool like we did yesterday. Yesterday, we cut all the way along the tool. We slid the tool down by one full leaf shape and we cut again to make 16 leaves at once. Well, we can't do that quite as quickly for our hand applique shapes, but what we can do is stack up four layers of fabric now, yesterday, our fabric had fusible on it. Today, we don't need the fusible because we're making these shapes for hand applique. So I've cut one edge around the tool with my rotary cutter. Let's do that again. I'm gonna cut around the tool, just one four inch curve with my rotary cutter. And then I'm gonna turn that shape around four at a time, and I'm gonna over cut that shape. I've got a dashed line right here that outlines the four inch leaf from point to point. I wanna add about three eighths to a half of an inch so that I have a turn under allowance. So I'm just overshooting. Now there are some lines on the tool that are a quarter of an inch from that curved edge. So I can go a quarter plus a quarter, that'll be a half inch bigger than what I need but I like to do a scant quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna pull it back halfway in between the quarter of an inch and the half of an inch. So I'm just adding a scant seam allowance to that piece. Oh, need to change my blade. That one's a little dull. Let me grab a different cutter. Okay. Now, after I have overcut my shapes, I'm going to take them one at a time or maybe two at a time and I'm going to pull that tool over by that scant quarter of an inch, and I'm going to mark with a Hira marker. Now I'm gonna turn that shape around, and just where I marked with the Hira marker on that scant quarter of an inch, I'm gonna place the dash line of the tool, and then I'm gonna mark with that Hira marker again. Now I made that edge really small. I didn't mean to go that scant. So let me cut that again. Let me cut it a little bit bigger this time. I'm gonna go with the half inch this time. Okay, 
And then we're gonna do the same thing again. So I'm gonna take one or two away so I can mark two at a time. And I'm gonna use that Hira marker to mark that scant quarter of an inch. The Hira marker is just a piece of plastic and it's got a nice thin edge on it. So it will score the fabric next to the ruler. And I'm gonna turn that around. The dash line falls right over the line that I've just scored. And I'm gonna do that again. So I wanna show you what that looks like up close in the camera. Okay, can you see that score line? Makes it a little bit shiny from the plastic on the Hera marker. Also, because I'm doing that on a cutting mat, it actually makes a little crease in the fabric. Can you see that the fabric is actually bent? Now, what that does is it prepares my fabric ahead of time. So now my leaf has that memory so I can pinch these edges under with my fingers and give it a beautiful little line that's nice and curvy that I'm gonna be able to turn on really, really easily because I've already scored that with my Hera marker. So I will sit at night and pinch these little leaves to turn under those edges. And then I treat this just like a needle turn project. So I'm gonna to go to my fabric and I need to add my little stem first. So I'm gonna give you a similar technique for the stem. So let's go ahead and cut our stems. Now, yesterday when I made my fused applique piece, I didn't bother to make bias stems and I should have, but I didn't. So I cut this on the straight grain of the fabric. As I was stitching it, I had some little threads pulling away from that straight grain edge. If I had cut these fused pieces on the bias, I wouldn't have had fraying like I did along the edges. So I wished I had cut these bias. So let me show you how we're gonna cut our stems on the bias this time. Well, that same piece of fabric I was cutting my leaves from, what I did was I took my long ruler and I found the 45 degree angle and I cut a nice diagonal line from a straight edge. So I'm truly on the bias right here when I cut from this piece of fabric. So I put the 45 degree line on the nice straight cut edge so that my next cut is right on the bias. Now I'm gonna cut a piece of that bias. Now I'm gonna do a lot of these blocks so I could cut the whole thing. Let me just take one layer because I've already got some cut. I'm just gonna take one layer where I've already cut that on the bias. And now I'm gonna cut a piece of fabric that's three quarters of an inch wide, okay? Three quarters of an inch wide. Now this size can be varied depending on exactly what size of uh, a vine you want. But I want mine to be a quarter of an inch wide. So I cut my bias three quarters of an inch. Now I'm gonna go over by one quarter and I'm gonna do a scant quarter by using the outside edge of my marking lines. And I'm gonna score that bias with my hero marker. Then I'm gonna turn that piece of bias around and because it's bias, it wants to stretch. So I'm gonna lay it out on the straight lines on my board so I can make sure it's on the straight lines of my ruler. Once again, I'm gonna go a scant quarter of an inch from this edge. So I'm putting this edge on the half inch line and I'm gonna score that with my Hera marker. Now, if I try to turn under a quarter of an inch and another quarter of an inch, that's a lot to turn under this quarter of an inch center. But the center, because I was generous and I did a scant quarter of an inch on each side, I can turn that edge under and both of these edges will go under the center piece. If you wanted a true quarter of an inch and you didn't use a scant quarter, you may need to trim down 
your seam allowance after you score it. That way, it's easier to push this little bit under if you only have a quarter of an inch that you want to show. Mine's a little bit wider than a quarter, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now that you have that scored line, remember the fabric wants to crease, but I wanna show you something. You can see that scored line on both the back and the area that I scored first. So this part wants to fold under because I scored it and it made a little crease. So that's the part that wants to turn under. So when I put it on my project, I actually have to put it face down. The part that I scored with the, rotor, with the Hera marker is down, but I can still see that line because it makes a nice shiny little crease. Can you see that on the television? Uh, excuse me, on the computer? <laughs> I hope so. It's a little uh, fuzzy. It's a little fuzzy, okay. Yeah. Sometimes it takes time for this to- um, That's a little better. Yeah, it takes time for it to focus and I have to hold it really still. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So now I've put that piece on my project. You can see it here. It has two scored lines. And I basted this piece along one of those scored lines. And on the other scored line, I'm using my needle to turn under and to stitch. And I say I'm using my needle, but I dropped my needle on the floor. So I no longer have my needle in hand. But I'll just take my needle and just push that quarter of an inch under. It already has a memory for that line because you've scored it with the Hera marker. And then you're going to blind stitch along that line. Once you do the first one, you can pull out your basting stitch because now one edge is completely down and you're going to be able to turn under the second scored line now that you have your basting stitch out. I can't do it, my basting stitch is still in there. So after my stem is done, I'm going to take the leaves that I scored with the Hera marker. Let's see if I can find one. I have one, but it's the very thin one, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take this one that I've scored with the Hera marker. I'm gonna put that on and I would baste this one about a quarter of an inch inside of the line. When you baste inside of the line, you're able to use your needle to turn right on that scored line and tuck those edges under. The basting will help you to keep those edges under as you do your hand stitching. So I know that many of you are already hand appliqueers. So I probably don't need to go through the hand applique stitch. It's really about giving you an easier way to turn under your edges. But if you are curious about that hand applique stitch, I won't do it because I can't get that, this needle threaded. But if you're curious about that hand applique stitch, I take my needle and I put it in directly where this thread is coming out. That thread is so fine because I'm using a hundred weight polyester thread. The thread that I like to use is called Invisifil. It acts like silk and a lot of hand applicators like to use silk thread. So I take a stitch that's about a 16th of an inch and I will come up on the applique piece. Where I come up, that's where my thread is coming out. My needle is gonna go down in the background exactly where that thread comes out and then just take another tiny, tiny little nip of the edge of that folded fabric. So that's how you achieve this beautiful blind applique stitch on your turned applique edges. Now I don't do a lot of hand applique myself. I really have fallen in love with rotary cut fusible applique using Misty Fuse. 
But I do want to show you um, a few little prog uh, projects in process. Okay, so uh, here's a little uh, flower petal here. Uh, I'm sorry, a little flower here. And I was demonstrating how to use the hearts and more tools to make your little center template that you can gather around and you can stitch around. You can also use the hearts and more tools to cut your circles and then draw a line or score a line with your Hera marker to turn under for your seam allowance. So this is not just good for leaves and stems. You can do this with other shapes as well. Now I did promise you that we would talk about some other methods of applique. And when I was first learning to applique, my favorite method was freezer paper. You can use freezer paper and it has a glossy side with a little bit of wax on it. Now this is not parchment paper, this is freezer paper. I can take four or even six layers of the freezer paper and I just tack them with my iron. The, this side of the paper has a little bit of wax on it and it will melt together to stick that together. And I've tacked it just in a couple of places on that paper. Now I can use my leaves galore tools and I can cut my paper shapes in that same manner, just like I did yesterday with my fabric, I can cut my paper shapes in that same manner. Now it gets a little unwieldy with paper, especially this freezer paper, because it was on a roll and now it's curly. So I'm gonna modify my technique a little bit. And instead of cutting eight at a time, I'm just cutting four at a time. I won't waste these pieces. I'm gonna cut those into shapes as well. So now I have these beautiful little freezer paper shapes that are the finished size of my leaves. So I can take my freezer paper shapes and I can fuse those freezer paper shapes onto my fabric. Now I turned off my iron because you'll remember yesterday it was giving me fits because it kept beeping. It's an auto shut off iron and it kept beeping on me. But I'll go ahead and see like that. I'll go ahead and turn that on for just a minute so I can demonstrate that freezer paper method. So I'll take a little um, ironing board here and I'm gonna take a bit of that fabric and I'm gonna fuse my paper shape to the fabric. I think from this four inch leaf, I'm gonna be able to get two of these little leaves. Okay. So let's get those down with a hot iron. My iron's probably not quite hot enough yet. Now, another product that you can use is the Appliquick foundations. I put my freezer paper on the front of the fabric. Some people put it on the back when they do hand applique. When you're doing Appliquick, it's also a foundation method, but you use the Appliquick foundation and it's fusible. You use the Appliquick foundation, fusible side down, uh, I'm sorry, fusible side up, and you put that on the back of your fabric. So each of these methods is a foundation method. And a foundation method is nice, but it um, takes that extra step, right, to make those foundations. So what I'm proposing is that you use your leaves galore tools to make your foundations. And I'm just gonna turn this iron off so it doesn't beep at me again. Now that I have my foundation, on the fabric. I'm going to use that same tool again, and I'm going to cut a scant quarter inch around that shape. Now I could also just do that by eye because it's not that quarter of an inch is not all that critical. That's our turn under allowance, so it doesn't have to be exact. So I can either use the tool to guide me or I can just cut that one by eye. Let me use the tool to guide me on this one. 
Now there is a quarter of an inch marking on the tool, so I can see how to cut around that shape to get that a perfect quarter of an inch. I don't need a perfect quarter of an inch. Now I like to do freezer paper on top. That means when I turn my applique edges, I'm only turning to the edge of the freezer paper. And once again, I will sit around in the evening and give it a little crease like this with my fingers or not. Sometimes I'll just baste these right onto the, to the fabric and then I'll turn under with my needle just to the edge of the paper. I like to do freezer paper on top because it's easy to remove that paper once it's completely stitched down. If I do the freezer paper on the bottom, then I can turn a nice crisp edge around that freezer paper. And that's very easy to do with the tip of your needle. You're just pulling that seam allowance around the paper. The problem with doing the freezer paper on the bottom is that you still have to remove that paper. So from the back of your applique, you've got to make a slit and pull the paper out through a little slit in your applique, leaving the applique piece on top without paper. Now it's nice because you can reuse these papers that you've cut very um, quickly, but you can reuse these two or three times before you don't have any more sticky on the back. Now with the Applequick method, the technique is basically the same. You're gonna make your foundation from the paper. You're gonna put it on the back of your fabric and then you can needle turn the edges or you can use the Applequick method of gluing down the edges. Now Applequick has this, uh, these cool little tools that are made for gluing down these edges. I have never gotten very used to using these, but the idea is you keep your fingers out of the sticky glue by using these really cool tools and they have all these different ends on them to help you turn under your edges. So that's a nice method as well. But I find all of these methods and all of that hand stitching, to me, it's very, very time consuming. But if you love doing hand applique, these are just a few of the methods that you can use using your leaves galore and your hearts and more tools to create your foundations, not the fabric pieces, but the foundations. Then you iron your foundations onto your fabric, rough cut your fabrics around that, and you are ready to start your hand applique projects. So whether you're doing foundations or you are cutting a scant quarter of an inch bigger and using your Hera marker, to mark your stitching lines, either any of these techniques are made faster with rotary cutting those applique shapes. All right, so I'm gonna take some questions first about the hand applique methods, okay? And then I'll continue on with my presentation. So anybody out there has some questions about the hand applique methods? I'll be happy to clarify anything. Lorraine, did you have a question? I've got, uh, oh, in the chat, Donna, just double check, make sure. Okay, so I don't see any questions just yet. So I'm gonna go through some of the pros and cons of hand applique. Yesterday, we did the pros and cons of fusible applique. I sent this to everybody in an email so you can print it out yourself, okay? And Sue, first, there, Sue, there are now a couple of questions out there. Good, good, good. So go one ahead. about silk thread. Why is it preferred? Okay. Silk thread is extremely fine thread and silk is very strong. So a lot of hand appliqueers love to hand applique with silk thread. And I have several spools they're very, very expensive, but that silk thread is fine and it's pretty sturdy. Although I do tend to break it a lot because it's really, really fine. But the silk just melts into the fabric. 
So it doesn't stay on top of the cotton like a cotton thread does. So your stitches can truly become invisible. Now I find the exact same result when I use Invisifil thread. Now Invisifil thread is not the same as invisible thread. Invisifil thread is a brand name or a, 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 a line of thread from the brand uh, Wonderfill. So this is Invisifil thread. It's a hundred weight polyester. It's actually stronger, excuse me, it's stronger than the silk and it's finer. And it does the exact same thing. It melts right into your cotton fabric. So you don't even see it when you're doing a hand applique stitch. So whether you're using silk or you're using Invisifil, I prefer the Invisifil because it doesn't break as easily and it's a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. I do have a collection of um, typical Invisifil colors on my website. It's kind of a rainbow collection so that you'd have um, some of every color. Now with Invisifil thread, it blends in so beautifully, you don't have to match your color exactly. And it's a hundred weight, so it's so fine. It almost takes on the color of whatever's around it, right? It's just really, really thin, okay. So that's invisible thread, Invisifil thread. Go ahead, Donna, another question. Uh, will these work on wool? And I'm not sure if we're talking about the Hira marker or just the technique for wool applique. Okay, so for wool applique, I don't turn under any edges. So even though it is a hand applique method, I normally use a, butt, a blanket stitch or a buttonhole stitch on my wool applique. The techniques for cutting work beautifully on the wool applique, but you're not gonna layer your fabrics four at a time. It's just too lofty and spongy. So for wool, you'll wanna cut one layer at a time. For wool, I use Misty Fuse because that allows me to fuse it in place so I can do my hand stitching easily. You could also use a glue stick or whatever other method you use for wool. But personally, I like to use the Misty Fuse on the back of the wool. It prevents those edges from fraying as you're doing your blanket stitching. And I also use uh, felted wool, wool that's been washed so that those edges don't fray very much, okay? <laughs> okay, there's uh, one question from Lenora, which sounds like a, uh, which comes first. So is it hand applique if you use fusible web, but hand blanket stitch around the edges without turning under? Okay, that's a great question. I would still call that fusible applique, but of course you are stitching by hand. So it's really a combination, but typically people call hand applique a blind stitch with the edges turned under. That's what I would call hand applique. Yes, you are doing blanket stitch applique by hand, but it's still blanket stitch applique without the edges turned under. So yes, you can do a blanket stitch applique that way with fusible, okay? So it's I don't have a clear answer for you because technically I'm not sure how that would be classified, but I don't call that hand applique personally, okay? All right, any other questions out there, Donna? Uh, just the last one was whether you had time to demonstrate the lemon shape. Oh, sure, uh, sure. Cutting or stitching or both, probably both. Probably cutting, I would imagine, but. The lemon shape, okay. Yeah, lemon um, shape. You know what, I am gonna put you off on that just a bit and I'll tell you why. I have that shape on my website on one of the videos and I've got a little bit more of my presentation to do. But I will say, stick around, and I'll do that at the very, very end, okay? But let me finish up the presentation, ask for any more questions, and then I will demonstrate that. So whoever's asking, please stick around to the end and I will show you that. If you don't have time to stick around, if your time is limited, go ahead on my website. You're gonna find some basic cutting instructions with leaves galore and the lemon shape is on there. Okay. I'll, I'll put the link out there on the um, chat as on well. On the chat, great, thank you, thank you. All right, so we just finished up with our hand applique demonstration. I'm gonna share my screen again. Now, um, oh, I've got a typo there. I was just typing this this morning. 
Yesterday, I asked you how much time you have to devote to quilting every day. And the answers ranged from not enough to as much time as I want. So everybody has different needs out there. Some people want something that's super quick. Other people have time to perfect these hand applique skills. So you have to know where you want to spend your time. Well, I have a customer, her name is Amy, and she said she tries to sew for 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes is all she can spare every day. And I told you, I try to sew for 22 minutes a day. That's not a whole lot of time to get all these beautiful quilts finished. So I try to use all of these fast and fun techniques to get my quilts done faster. It's not that I want to rush through my quilts. I want beautiful quality quilts, but I don't want to waste time. And I don't want to take use a method that takes a lot of time because I simply don't have that time to devote to my quilting and neither does Amy. Well, Amy made this beautiful My Magical Garden quilt. It's a little fuzzy on my screen, but it really is gorgeous. And that was her first My Magical Garden quilt. She's making it again. She was one of the first ones. In fact, she was the first one to finish this quilt in a nine month course. And she was sewing about 15 minutes a day. It's just amazing to me what people can accomplish when they learn these quick methods. But that wasn't Amy's first class with me. Here she is with my friend Kristen, and they both took the clamshell workshop, a four hour workshop at Machines Quilt, Machine Quilters Expo. So that's when I was on the road teaching all the time, and you had to drag your machine to a show and learn how to do this technique on the road. Well, Amy and Kristen took this four hour workshop. That was her first workshop. And her second class was the My Magical Garden, where she did that absolutely beautiful quilt. Let me just go back there. That was only her second project with me. It's just amazing. I love it. So I know that all of you have families, you've got homes, you've got jobs, and they all compete for your attention and for your time. And it's easy to let days go by or even weeks go by without creating something, without feeding your soul and doing the things that you love to do. So I want to give you an alternative, right? When you, when you do make time for yourself, isn't it nice when that time can feel more creative and more productive and you can confidently get your quotes done because you have some fun quick methods. Gail, I'm laughing. You are upside down on my screen. <laughs> so fun. Well, I know, whether... I know I have been on with Apple support for the past 45, 50 minutes trying to understand why I'm upside down. That's okay. It doesn't bother me a bit. Okay. If you don't fall and hurt your head. We're good. <laughs> now, whether you love hand applique or fusible applique or glue applique, and we're going to cover glue applique tomorrow for something like this huge clamshell quilt, quilt with big, big pieces. Um, whether you like hand applique, fusible applique, glue applique, every one of these methods can be made faster and more fun by rotary cutting your shapes. So that is what I'm here to talk to you about today is making applique faster and more fun with rotary cut applique. Well, my Leaves the Lord templates make five basic shapes. Somebody asked about the lemon shape leaf and we'll make that later. I'll show you how to make the lemon shape leaf. So far, we've only done vines and standard leaves, but you can also make these beautiful S-shaped curves and Z-shaped curves, and you can make those shapes in six different sizes. So they're very versatile for all different types of applique. Well, ahead of the curve membership, is the best way for you to learn these new techniques. You'll, you would be completing small projects as you practice the techniques. Oh, by the way, that's our Ahead of the Curve logo. That is a quilt that we did with the group. And we use this as an example of how to do 
uh, raw, true raw edge applique. So those edges are just stitched around with a straight stitch. There's no blanket stitching or buttonhole stitching. And we did machine quilting practice in this workshop. So we don't only get into cutting applique shapes, we get into all different types of stitching as well as machine quilting in our workshops as well. Now, after teaching for the last 13 years on the road, I've been going to the AQS shows, the Mancuso shows, Road to California, um, Houston Quilt Festival. I just am tired of dragging my sewing machine and my supplies and my tools out to these shows to meet my customers and to give you workshops. Now, COVID has given us an alternative. We have learned that we can learn beautifully on Zoom and make gorgeous quilts together on Zoom. My students don't have to travel to see me. They don't have to pay for hotels and quilt show conferences and classes. Instead, I'm going to come to you in your own home. Okay, so you can forget about packing up that sewing machine and all your supplies. You get to work in your sewing room with your stash at your fingertips. How often do you go to a class and say, oh my gosh, I wish I had, I wish I knew that I needed this particular thing that's back at home, right? Instead, you're gonna work in your home and my members call it sewing in slippers with Sue because you're gonna find me all the time in my slippers or in the summertime here, my bare feet sewing in slippers here in my sewing room. Now, Ahead of the Curve membership has technique videos. We have a whole library of recorded workshops. We have live workshops that happen twice a month and you get to choose one. We have virtual retreat days like this where we all sew together. We have now a weekly Q&A. That's new. We were doing it every two weeks, but we decided to combine with another group that I have and do a weekly Q&A, and that's the live on Facebook every Tuesday at 11. We have a fabulous community where we all encourage each other and help each other. And when you're a member of our Ahead of the Curve community, you get discounts on my website. So we have a special area of the website just for Ahead of the Curve members. So I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to show you around the website. And I've got it up right here because I want to show you what that member area looks like. So if you're currently a member or if you're thinking that this might be fun, this is what you're going to access when you become a member. So over here on the right hand side of the toolbar or up here on top, it says customer login. When you go to that member student content tab, I'm already logged in as Sue Pelland. And that means I have access to everything that I've paid for. So my ahead of the curve members have access to these five blocks right here. Those are our technique videos. So that brings you to a whole list of videos that you can learn from. There's our critter videos across the top. That's for platinum members. But all of our gold and platinum members have access to all of these different technique videos. Now, there are 16 sessions. Some of the sessions have three or four videos within the session. So there's a lot of information to consume here. And we also have some supporting documents that go with the videos. So if you click on the videos, you're going to see how to do that job. Here is preparing your fabrics with Misty Fuse. So you just go right there, play the video, and it's there at your fingertips. Me demonstrating for you. And there are, as I said, 16 sessions, some of them with multiple videos. So that is the technique library. Then we have on-demand projects. If you don't have time to take a class with me one month, or if you want an extra class that month, 
we have on-demand projects. Our gold members have access to Melissa's quilt, pillow boxes, promise ring, leaves galore techniques, clever clamshells, twin tiles, Christmas baubles, and the hearts and more techniques. Those are all your foundational projects that are going to teach you the most information. Then our platinum level members get access to a whole slew more of our video classes. So once I've taught this class, we edit down the video and then we put it up here for you to watch whenever you have free time. There's that inner circle workshop that I told you was all about the free motion quilting and the raw edge applique. But there's loads of choices in there for you. Now, when you do have time to take a workshop with me in, um, in one month, you get to choose from two currently available workshops. So these are our two July workshops. You would either sign up for my Magic Carpet Table Runner or Bats and Pumpkins. Bats and Pumpkins is a level two workshop. Uh, Magic Carpet Ride Table Runner is a level one workshop. So we do tell you what's best for your skill level and you grow with the group. After that, we've got lots of other information for members on how to do things and frequently asked questions about the membership. So if you're wondering how the membership works, how your coupon works for your discount off of products, you'll go here and get all of that information right there at your fingertips. Now, in addition to ahead of the curve membership, we have other students that are doing other projects with us. These are pre-recorded courses that you can also access from the member and student content page. These are separate courses. They are not included in the membership. So next week, I'm gonna have a, a new member orientation. And during new member orientation, I'll be going through a lot of that information for members within the orientation. So if you're new to our membership, I'll show you how to get started and how to get around. Now, if you're curious to learn more about the membership, you're gonna find that right here. Um, the gold level membership is $49 a month. The platinum leaf membership is $69 a month. And everything that's included for that price is listed here. And we do have some special bonuses while applique school is going on. If you join during applique school over uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, you're gonna get a two pack of 28 millimeter rotary cutting blades because we use a lot, uh, we do a lot of rotary cutting in our classes. So new blades are always welcome. Then if you join membership, you're also gonna get a 50% off coupon off your tools. Now, if you already have my tools, you can opt for a 25% off coupon off your total order instead. So it's up to you, whatever you feel is gonna be better for you. Now, the third bonus is coming to that Q&A with me next week. So you can learn all about how to get started with your membership in the best way possible. So how did I get to this page? I went to, let me go back, learn rotary cut applique. Under learn rotary cut applique, you'll find out all about the tools on the first tab, what is rotary cut applique. You'll find out all about the membership on the second tab. And you'll find all about those pre-recorded courses, those beautiful quilts that are nine month or 12 month projects. Those are all under the pre-recorded courses. But we are encouraging people to get started with the membership because that's the most effective way to learn all of these techniques. So when you join ahead of the curve, you'll go right here and think about it, look at all of the options, and then click on one of the become a member um, buttons. Now here on the course itself, on the membership itself, you get to choose whether it's a monthly charge or a yearly charge. 
If you do yearly, there's quite a nice discount. You get two months for free, okay? So just pointing that out, both for gold leaf members and for platinum leaf members, if you decide to go with the yearly plan, you'll get two months for free. And all you do is add that to your cart and check out and you are then immediately a member. So within that member student content area, you'll have access to all of the content that we just told you about right here on your page. And you can come to the Q&A with me next week and learn all about how to get the most out of your membership. All right, well, I am so excited to show you the benefits of using Rotary Cut Applique yesterday for Fusible Applique. Today, we saw some of the benefits of using the Rotary Cut Applique tools to make our hand applique easier. And tomorrow, we're gonna focus on glue applique. Now, glue applique is a little bit limited. I don't use that a lot, but it's nice to have that technique under your belt. So if you have um, a situation where glue applique would be appropriate, I'll teach you about when it's appropriate tomorrow. And I'll talk to you about the pros and cons of using the glue tomorrow. Um, I just had a, I just spotted another question in the chat, Donna, but go ahead and ask your questions in the chat. Donna, help me out here. Did I see something about a quilt for the blind? Uh, yes, there is a question there. Have you made a quilt for the blind? I believe it would need padding and quilting. Our daughter is blind, so I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Okay, okay. So, um, what comes to mind to me is, uh, yes, I, because they're so tactile, I think a quilt for the blind is an amazing thing because they're gonna be able to feel that pattern both in the applique and in the quilting. So no, the answer is no, I have not made a quilt for the blind. Um, the other thing that comes to mind is that um, we make fidget quilts in our guild and fidget quilts are made for Alzheimer's patients because it gives them things that are very tactile to fidget with, beads and buttons and strings and bows and different textures, ribbons and twine, different things that they can do, zippers and, and those types of things. So um, that might also be something that you would be, uh, I'd be curious about if that might be something that you'd be interested in. Now, of course, um, what I'm thinking of is just the tactile nature of the fidget quilts, but just an applique quilt by itself with quilting. And that means you put a layer of batting in there so it does have some loft to it. Somebody that's blind would really be able to feel the texture of that quilt and see the beauty of that quilt without their eyes, just by feeling it. So I hope that helps to answer your question, but the answer is no, I haven't done that. If you wanna talk about that separately, it's kind of an aside. It doesn't really pertain to what we're doing today, other than the fact that I think applique is a great technique to use if you were making that quilt, okay? There was, another, there was another suggestion from someone um, about trapunto, giving oh. some texture and raising. Yes. Yep. yes. So trapunto is a traditional method of stuffing your um, quilting or your applique or both to give it even more texture. So look up trapunto on Google and you'll see some methods out there for that. Good idea. So the, uh, there's another question from Lenora about sharpening your blades, or do we just keep buying more? And I will say that the sharpeners have never worked that I have tried. Um, but then more importantly, if you're buying more, how do you discard of the, the old ones safely? Okay, great question, Lenora. Lenore or Lenora? I have both in my group. Lenora. Lenora. Okay, so um, first of all, your blades typically come in little plastic packages often, not all the time, but they often come in little plastic packages. And I use those for disposing of the blades as well. 
I keep a tin. You might recognize this as those old coffee tins. What was that called? There was a name for that brand of coffee. It's this one's Cafe Vienna and they're cute. Coffee came in the tins. It was kind of an instant coffee that you just mixed with water, has a nice little plastic cap. And I made a little slit for my um, blades so I can just drop them in here and they're not going to uh, hurt anybody. And I, excuse me, if I just do the blades without the plastic containers, then I can throw this whole tin into the metal recycling. So I like that idea. But what I also have in here are needles and pins where the heads have popped off. So I throw any metal things in here and then I will end up emptying out these plastic containers and disposing of them that way. So the question about sharpening, um, my experience has been that even the nicest sharpener out there, which I think is the Grace uh, Rotary Blade Sharpener, they don't do a particularly good job with 28 millimeter blades. They're much better on the bigger blades. So I do not sharpen them anymore. I used to try to do that. A, it's really noisy. B, it's really time consuming. And I'd rather spend my time with all of you. So I don't sharpen my blades anymore. Instead, I buy more. Now, your rotary cutting blades for curves need to be super sharp. After you've used them for your curves and they're not so sharp anymore, I can still cut straight lines with them, but, but they wear out. You have to have a sharper blade to cut curves than you do have to with straight lines. So I keep a certain type of rotary cutter nice and sharp for cutting my curves. And then I'll keep another rotary cutter for cutting straight lines. And that can use those duller blades. They don't have to be quite as sharp. I don't know if that helps. Okay. I usually mark the yellow um, container with used on it so that I do have them yeah. identified. Yeah, I do the same thing until I started, um, or actually I didn't say used, I said old. <laughs> um, I started putting even the containers in here so I know exactly where they are to dispose of them. And I keep this container on a little shelf in my sewing room. All right, any other questions? Okay, great. Well, you will get a package of two new blades when you join the membership over these uh, yesterday, today, or tomorrow. And you will also get that 50% off coupon off your tools or a 25% off coupon off everything on my website for your first purchase. Now, Joanne, our shipper, she's going on vacation next week. So I will warn you, if you get your orders in this week, They'll be shipped out right away. If they come in next week, we only have a four day week. So your orders may be just a tad delayed. I don't know if I'll go into the warehouse and ship while Joanne's gone or if I'll just wait for her to come back on Monday. Hey, Gail, you're right side up again. Good for you. <laughs> now I've had so much fun with all of you here today. If you have any questions about the membership, what was the question I had yesterday? Oh, I know. Uh, as I said, when I left here yesterday, I had a whole slew of emails with people that were too shy to ask questions. So one of those questions was, if I join the Platinum Leaf membership, but find out that it's too expensive for me and I want to go down to the Gold Level membership the next month, how do I do that? So the answer to that is, you have complete control of your membership in your account page. So on your account page on the website, you can stop your membership, you can pause your membership for up to three months at a time, or you can downgrade or upgrade from one level to the next. So you have complete control. You don't need to call me or Penny or Donna and say, oh, I have to cancel my membership. There's none of that. You are in control and you do what you want to do with your membership, right? So you can do it for one month, six months, two years, like, uh, Anita and Irene, it's totally up to you. As long as you're having fun and learning, I'd love to have you in the group. 
when you've learned everything that you want to learn and you're ready to go off on your own, then you can just cancel your membership. So it is completely up to you. Now, the exception is if you pay for a year up front and you get the two months free, then you are locked into that year. Okay, we won't be doing any uh, oh, it's just too confusing to do a refund on that when you've only used part, part of the membership. So if you're not sure if you're going to do it for a whole year, just do month to month. And if you want the whole year to get those two months free, then we'll have you with us for the whole year and we can do all kinds of fun things together. Now, so speaking, notes, speaking of fun, Sue, we need to draw, do a drawing. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, we have uh, three more packages of Misty Fuse to go out to three lucky winners today. Donna, who do you have on your list? Well, uh, let's hope when I randomly pick that they're still here. So uh, Sandra Schmidt, I believe, is still on. Okay, Sandra. I'm here. You're still Yay. here. Yay. Congratulations, Sandra. Please leave your um, mailing address in the chat. And you can send that chat just to Donna if you want to. So everybody okay. else won't see it. I'll do that now. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Great. I hope you love Misty Fuse. And who's next, Donna? Dixie. All right, Dixie, where are you? Are you still here? Yeah, there she is. There yes. She is. Hey, Dixie. I see you up there. All right, good. Congratulations. Leave your address in the chat for Donna. And Donna, one more for me. Okay, and this, this was random, so I'm not sure she's still here. I didn't see the name. Sherry Char, C-H-A-A-R is the last name. Sherry, are you here? Sherry, calling all Sherry's. I don't see her. Here. I don't see it. Um, Vicki Elbin was the next one. Okay, are we all on one page or are we on two pages? We're on one Two page. pages. Oh, we're on two pages. Okay, Vicki? Hey. Vicki? Vicki is there? Good. All right, terrific, Vicki. Leave your address for Donna and we will get this out to you. I've got another question here from Lenora. Do you only use the small cutter? What are the pros and cons of a larger blade versus a smaller blade? Great question, Lenora. For rotary cut applique with our tools, you'll want to use the 28 millimeter rotary cutter. The 18 millimeter is too small and you won't be able to cut through four layers of fabric at a time. You can only cut through one, possibly two with an 18 millimeter rotary cutter. It goes around the curves really nicely, but for the speed of cutting, the 28 millimeter rotary cutter is perfect. Now a 45 is too big. It, it, it's too wide. So as you're cutting around your curves, it's gonna get caught in that curve and it's gonna damage your ruler and possibly your blade. We want those blades to last so we don't wanna be hitting our rulers with it. When you're trying to turn a quick curve, you're gonna catch the edge of the ruler. So we don't use the bigger rotary cutters. However, for straight cutting, they do last longer, right? Because they've got more cutting surface. So you're not using, it's not spinning as fast, so you're not using that same spot on the rotary cutter as, as often. So for large uh, projects, for cutting borders, for cutting squares or rectangles, I'll use a bigger rotary cutter because it will have a longer life. I save my nice little rotary cutter for cutting the curves. Now cutting the curves at first feels awkward. Okay, that's why I'd love for you to take some classes with me because I can make it easier for you if I can watch your technique and give you some pointers on your technique. So a couple of months in the membership is just worth its weight in gold because you'll, your learning curve will be so much faster. Okay, all right, anybody else? All right, I have- there, one. Yep, there was one question, Sue, about the recordings of the sessions. Yes, and I apologize. I tried to live stream yesterday and it just didn't want to let me. Today, I was successful at live streaming to YouTube, so that's where you'll find today's session. Then I will upload yesterday's <laughs> session to YouTube. And tomorrow, I hope I'll be successful at going to YouTube as well. So you should be able to see all three sessions. The problem is that our promotion ends on Friday. 
So I'm going to be taking those videos down because we're talking about this promotion on the membership to get the two free blades and the um, the 50% off coupon on the tools and to get the um, new member orientation. Well, new member orientation, everybody's going to get that. But um, if you sign up during applique school, you're going to get all three bonuses. So I'm going to take those videos down after applique school because I don't want people asking for those bonuses that weren't here. Okay. So um, I'll have them up through Friday at midnight. Okay. And that'll be your deadline for ordering the membership as well. All right. That way we can get you all of those bonuses. Now that first bonus, the two free blades, I'm really trying to get you to, um, to make a commitment to yourself to learn this technique. And if you do that during applique school today or tomorrow, you'll get the two blades. Okay. After that, that's our fast action bonus that goes away. You'll still get the other two bonuses. Okay. So if you're thinking about it, let's make that decision today or tomorrow, and then you'll get that two blade bonus. All right. Anybody else? Okay, I love working with all of my customers out there, all of my students, all of my friends that have become friends through learning this process. We do have a ball together, learning all types of new techniques. If you think this would be fun for you, I would love to have you in the membership. If you're not ready for that, I get it. Not everybody is ready for that step. Stick with me, okay? Keep watching keep looking at my newsletters, come to the session tomorrow. You'll keep learning more and more. And eventually, I'll bet you, you'll want to come work with me too. Okay. Love having you all here today. I have taken up enough of your time. And I've got Joanne coming over to sew today. We're going to do some charity sewing this evening. So I'm going to say goodbye to all of you lovely ladies. I think we all have, have all ladies on the call today. And I want to thank you for coming. It's been my pleasure. Take care, everybody. <laughs>